In a lot of our courses, I talk about the differences between the historic faith and some of the major doctrines of the Reformation. But you know, there's also a lot of differences between the historic faith and the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox churches. So in this group of messages, we're going to be looking at some of those major differences, and they are significant. We'll start off with Mary, who plays such a major role in Roman Catholic uh, teaching and practice and also in Eastern Orthodoxy. And yet, strangely enough, Mary is not even mentioned in the New Testament after the day of Pentecost. She plays no role in any of the theology discussed in the epistles. And yet somehow she's one of the key figures, a central part of Christianity for Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox. But is that the historic faith? Well, as we'll see, the early Christians actually have very little to say about Mary, but what they do say often contradicts what the Catholics and Eastern Orthodox teach. Well, from there, we're going to move to the subject of apostolic succession. Is that something our churches should have? Is a minister not validly ordained if he doesn't have apostolic succession? In fact, what did the early Christians mean by apostolic succession? What did it mean in the historic faith? We'll be looking at that, and we'll see that it's quite different than what the Catholics and Orthodox teach. Also, we'll discuss the subject of, is it right to pray to saints and to venerate images? We'll see what the early Christians had to say on, the, on that topic. Next, we'll look at the seven so-called ecumenical councils. You know, the Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox teach that the creeds from those councils are on the same level as scripture. But is that true? Well, look at what really went on in those councils and were they really inspired by God? We're going to then move on to look at the claims of Rome about the papacy and its claim that it's the one true historic church. You know, there are millions and millions of Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox, and yet the vast majority of them have no vibrant, living relationship with Jesus Christ. And there's a reason for that. It's because they're not practicing or following the historic faith. And so the ultimate aim of these messages is to draw us all back to the historic faith and also to lead us into a vital, vibrant, living relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm.